What's up guys, it's the kid here, talking about Mario Kart again with some more thoughts, and the LA Auto Show, which is probably the most awesome thing that's happened this year, um, West Coast Customs um, has created these real life sized Mario Karts. Um, I don't think they're functionable, but hey, uh, I'm pretty sure they can put a mortar in it and it can get rolling. Maybe they are, so they look cool. So you see, basically, this is all in dedication of Mario Kart 7. Um, you see that B card and the standard card for Mario Kart 7. Um, the one that uh, Mario uses in as well as everybody else with a different color. And it's just a very cool sight. I mean, it's just, you know, unbelievable. You know, you really just do want to climb up in it and, you know, go go-kart. And that's why, you know, someone has suggested that Nintendo should make a a um, theme park. And you know what? That would be incredibly spectacular if they made a theme park. I mean... That would give actually Disney and Universal Studios some competition right there. And it would be very cool if they could like feature some uh, go-karting with Mario Kart. Uh, that would be just completely cool if they had a few tracks and stuff inspired by different places of you know Mario Kart and actually have them. And I'm not talking about some ordinary you know tracks i'm talking about real giant tracks and stuff if they had a theme park and that kind of makes me wish that was you know actually happened because of these cards that would be so cool if you can be in these cards and stuff um have different types of cards at least a different design card it would just be really fun if that could happen but you know it is still a good idea but who knows, maybe in the future when Nintendo finally decides to, you know, grow a little bit more than what they are. That would be very cool to have a Nintendo theme park, um, even though it probably will most likely be somewhere where everybody has to fly like a thousand miles to get to, probably in Florida or something. It would be cool if it was out here in California, but... Aside from these cool models and stuff and Reggie Films uh, sucking at the game uh, at the event and him being in the cart looking like a complete douchebag, um, I want to go through some of the information that was in the Japanese overview trailer, which no one could understand, but basically it talked about a lot of online and customization and stuff, so that's what I want to talk about this time, because this game is only about, I think, two weeks away, so we don't have that long till it comes out, so I want to get some of my thoughts in this, and, you know, I know I did a Why I'm Excited video, but this is more of my thoughts, and... Um, some basic information on the game. So, with online, you will you will already have friends, of course, which your uh, that you have on your 3DS, um, and also worldwide play and local play, um, with up to eight players uh, on Wi-Fi, and the game will run at 60 frames per second on Wi-Fi. Also. You know, if you're just playing a Grand Prix, you know, not on Wi-Fi or Internet. And the thing that really catches everybody's eyes and really gets me, you know, very excited for the game itself is the community creator. Now, um, it says that uh, creating a community, anyone can create a community. You just need to choose the game settings for it and share the code assigned to the community with your friends. Now, I don't know if that comes in like a friend code or if you can just pass some type of message, you know, to your friends. Maybe the friend the friend uh 
option in the 3DS will be updated uh, prior to Mario Kart's uh, arrival like it has been. Now you can join friends through your friends list on the 3DS. So maybe something will be updated, a messaging system or something. So it says that anyone can create a maximum of eight communities. So everybody, only eight players, so your friends and stuff can join you. So that's pretty cool. Um, But I heard from, I think, IGN or GameSpot said that uh, you cannot change any settings once everything is set but you can delete you can delete your communities as long as no one's using it at the time so it really doesn't matter um i'm sure it doesn't keep any type of score and sorry if you guys heard some type of car going past someone just went past wildly but um it's really cool it will help a lot to organize friend battles and stuff uh and with it being fully customizable with you choosing the settings that means you can choose what course of course you can change the course it's not just a set uh a set amount of courses you can choose it um you can choose what items you want in the game as you play so imagine everybody picking blue shells and stuff that would be very hectic and you know, it, it's just really cool to have these things like communities. And again with that, but it's really cool to have communities because it shows that Nintendo does actually care about online gaming, which everybody s- seems to state that they really don't care much for, but it's obvious they do. It is rumored that there will be some type of channel um, for this, for leaderboards, like it was in Mario Kart Wii, for the Wii, but um, that has yet to actually be confirmed. So, you have ghost data, which you can use um, for friends or maybe um, seriously, um, maybe with friends and Nintendo Ghosts, like Mario Kart Wii, that would be cool again. Those were actually really hard, too, and people are pretty good at mastering tracks and um, beating, you know, a, someone's record. I mean, you get creative, especially with all these new things incorporated in it. So I think communities are good. Of course, I'm going to use that for my Mario Kart Saturdays. Uh, I'm going to make a group for that. Of course, not everybody can join me. So, you know, someone else can make a group called Mario Kart Saturdays. I don't I don't care. Um, so, you know, I guess it will work that way. But it's just a really cool feature of the game. So... With tracks, I do have a list of every track, so if you guys don't want to be spoiled about this, um, of this content, then you should skip over um, some. But I'm going to start with the um, the newer uh, levels from the Star Cup to the uh I, the special cup the mushroom cup to the special cup and these tracks are very creative and i'm going to talk about them once i tell you all of the tracks and i'll also put it in the description all the tracks i'm going to talk about some of them that i have actually seen and again if you guys are wondering some of these tracks will be named differently in the uk so I'm not sure if I'm either pointing out the uh, North America track names or the UK names. So, if so, bear with me. So, I'll go from the Mushroom Cup. Uh, Toad Circuit, Daisy Hills, Cheap Cheap Lagoon, Shy Guy, uh, Bazaar. Star Cup, Piranha Plant Slide, Wario Shipyard, Neil Bowser City, uh, Maka... Woohoo. Now, that's another thing. No one knows what Woohoo is. No one knows where it even came from. So, uh, I don't really know what inspired these this track right here. For the special cup, 
DK Jungle, Rosalina's Ice World, Bowser Council, Rainbow Road, of course. Flower Cup, Woohoo Loop One, Mario Circuit, Music Park, Rock Rock Mountain. So those are the new tracks, the 16 new tracks. I'll get to the old ones after I talk a little bit about one of these tracks. And that is Piranha Plant Slide. That is solely based upon classic Mario, uh, the first, the original Mario uh, games. It starts off in a 8-bit-like terrain, and then you end up underground with water and stuff, much like the second level of Super Mario Bros., and it's just a brilliant, a brilliant, a brilliantly made track. It really it is. And people have seen this. And actually, I can show you the video, which I'll put in the description to see this track. It is a brilliant track. It it's just it has a lot of nostalgia in it, and you know, it was well made. It's very well made, and I like the whole underwater. Um, thing too you have air pipes to let you float in the air a little bit longer or these other uh, um, jets that uh, you know propel you in the water upward or downward so it's really cool track I really like the track um, the Neo Bowser City is actually pretty new for Bowser and we actually do get a Bowser's castle but I guess he gets two um, tracks this time but the neo bowser city looks really cool futuristic um but again you can see that in um, the video that i'll post it's it cool it's cool but unexpected of course dk jungle inspired completely by donkey kong country returns uh rosalina's ice world never seen it um yet um Bowser's Castle, never seen it. Rainbow Road, had a glimpse of it. Looks cool. And some of these tracks will actually be a single lap. So I guess, uh, I think only two right now have been confirmed to be actually only uh, one lap. Maybe they're longer than most. So of course we get, you know, tracks inspired by uh, Wii Sports Resort. You're you're on that and I, I don't know if that is a uh, woo woo loop that could be where it's from but I don't remember the island being called woo hoo loop or whatever it's called or woo woo hoo island but anyway with the older retro tracks which is probably the best retro tracks we ever gotten in a Mario Kart game since I don't know when I'll go through that with the Shell Cup. That is N64 Luigi's Raceway. Woohoo. Glad we're getting that back. GBA Browser's Castle 1. We Mushroom Gorge. DS Luigi's Mansion. So glad they brought that back. Um, N64 Koopa Troopa Beach. NES. SNES Mario Circuit 2. We Coconut Mall. DS Waluigi pinball so glad that's coming back even though Waluigi is supposedly like in the game um, Leaf Cup N64 Calamari Desert DS DK Pass I'm glad that's back um, GCN Daisy's Cruiser We Maple Treeway cool I liked uh, Maple Treeway a lot Lightning Cup We Koopa Cape Yay, that was the best track in Mario Kart. Uh, Wii, I believe. Well, to me, you know. Uh, GCN, Dino Dino, Jungle. best One of the best tracks on uh, Mario Kart Double Dash. DS, Airship Fortress. You have no idea how glad I'm. This, this track right here was one of my favorite tracks on Mario Kart DS. Inspired by airships from Super Mario Bros. 3 and SNES Rainbow Road. So we're actually getting two Rainbow Roads. So we're getting um, a retro Rainbow Road and then, you know, of course, a new Rainbow Road. So that's cool. That's the first time ever for that. 
So those are all the tracks. Again, the list will be in the description for you guys to see for yourselves. But what um, I want to talk about too is characters. Characters um, in this game are very bizarre and very random at that. You have the Honey Queen from Super Mario Galaxy which was random but uh, I don't I agree I like the variety Nintendo's trying to have the you know kind of unexpected but I I say a welcome addition when most don't like the fact um you got Metal Mario which easily is probably a character that just shouldn't have been in the game I mean really it's just Mario painted metal it's it's just the character that I don't think that really deserved to be in. And then we have characters like the Wiggler, which is the caterpillar from all the Mario games, which I think were, was first seen in Super Mario World. I don't know why this character really is in the game. Now, I agree with some people. Some of the characters are like, what the heck? Some of the characters are cool. Metal Mario, okay, don't shouldn't be in the game, but you know it's Metal Mario. I haven't seen it in the game for a while, a long time, so okay. But seriously, the Wiggler, the caterpillar that no one really remembers. It's it's just a weird choice, and the way it drives is weird because it drives with its bottom hands and it has two sets of hands, and it, and when it drives, it looks it's hands on the top of his body is it, it's like this motion like it's trying to balance or something it's just so weird and random it really didn't deserve to be in the game and we have rosalina and shy guy um and stuff so the list makes 17 i believe with counting me's so people do think that some characters you know are missing like waluigi Dry Bones, um, who else? Diddy Kong, and Toadette. All those characters have been said they got axed, and people are very hurt about that, and I understand that, but don't complain as much as you guys are. Like on the GameSpot forums, it is freaking ridiculous how many form, how many threads they make about Waluigi not being a game, and people in general don't even play that much as Waluigi. They just want him in a game just because he usually is in a spinoff game. But I'm not gonna go up and upsetting a bunch of people. So, guys, these are my thoughts on Mario Kart Seven. And the L.A. show, uh, car show, or automobile show, whatever they call it. So, what do you guys think about all the tracks, characters, new characters, and the missing characters that has been in a franchise so far? And tell me what you guys think, and like, and subscribe. And, yeah, maybe I'll do another thoughts on Mario Kart 7 when more information is out. So, thank you guys for watching.